Attorneys in a sidebar right now as we see that Trayvon Martin's mom, Sabrina Fulton, has been recalled to the stand. I want to interrupt our uh, apologize ahead of time for our guests if we interrupt that means we've got to get back into court we do not want to miss a moment of this again with us jason johnson he's a professor also has spent time in sanford talking with those in the community their thoughts their feelings and wrote a very insightful article hlntv.com as well and esther panish criminal defense attorney esther panish why recall sabrina fulton at this point i'm not exactly sure it's an interesting uh it's it's an interesting development to call a witness back before rebuttal so usually you recall your witnesses after something the defense has done or said to mitigate what they or rehabilitate your witness. So I'm not exactly sure why they're calling her. Uh, it, it seems like the defense was trying to get the door open to introduce some of Trayvon's back round and history and some of the pictures that the judge has refused to allow in but we're not exactly sure I guess when they start asking questions we'll know exactly why they thought they had to recall her at this time and on that point Jason weigh in we heard questions from Mark O'Mara to the brother Javaris Fulton about Facebook Twitter right. uh, and how much you know I think the questions hinted at how much time he'd really spent with Trayvon right right because what what we've just seen here is a nice college educated family of African Americans and and you notice that Omera's whole goal is to say look Trayvon isn't necessarily as nice as the family you notice that he said when did your father leave the home he didn't leave the home they got divorced he tried to say well you didn't have the same kind of friends as him he's trying to bring people back to this idea that Trayvon Martin might have been the bad son and that that this kid can't really reflect on him. So it's an interesting sort of cultural and character argument. I don't know if the jury's gonna buy it, but that's what Omaro's trying to do. Okay, how does he get there though, Esther? Well, I mean, to Jason's point, there's still quite the gap to get there and to get anything in of, of Trayvon Martin's past, which it, again, the court ruled ahead of time. You can't bring any of that in, pictures, things like that. I agree. And the defense can't open their own door. They have to wait for the prosecution to open the door. And it doesn't sound like the prosecutors did. So I'm. I, this whole thing is very curious why they're calling her back so quickly and uh, but I agree with Jason he Omer was totally trying to uh, differentiate Trayvon from the rest of his family got it and again as we look at Sabrina Fulton if you missed it she was very strong earlier had to listen to the 911 call heard the screams in the background and the gunshot and then she was asked whose voice is it and she said unequivocally that's uh, her son Trayvon Martin the defense uh, and Esther, how do you think Marco O'Meara did? That's quite a tightrope because you cannot attack Sabrina Fulton in this, but he's trying to go with, you, you want to believe it's your son is where he was trying to go, right? Right, but I think that's a given. You know, any mother who's going to testify on behalf of the state to say that that's their son, everybody knows that that's what she wants to believe. So he doesn't really have to explore any, you know, any type of, bias on her behalf because it exists just by her nature of being up there uh, and, and he, he does have to walk a tightrope you cannot attack the victim's mother who is herself a victim of this crime so you know he he is trying to do a, 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 as good a job as he can to protect the interests of his client and at the same time not alienate the jury mm -hmm. Jason how, how do you think Marco Mara did on that front walk that tightrope did you find it jarring at all did he cross a line or did he just do what he had to do to try and represent his client, George Zimmerman. Yeah, the, the whole sort of scheduling of this doesn't make any sense. I thought Omara, who's been great throughout this case, I think this was terrible. Uh, I, I think, look, you're trying to to massage the victim's mother into saying, I was coached to say it was my son. That's where he was trying to go, and, and that doesn't make any sense. And, and I think, again, from a character standpoint, if I were the prosecution, the prosecution should have probably brought up Sabrina Fulton and the brother earlier in the trial to sort mm. of set the precedent for who Trayvon Martin was, because we're just now hearing that he's from this kind of family, I think they probably should have brought this up sooner. Interesting. Uh, again, as you talk about where we're heading with this trial, the state expected to rest today and the defense could begin their case uh, later this afternoon. Esther Panish, when we talk about how the prosecution is going to wrap up, do you end with mom and brother or do you have to bring in the medical examiner who actually examined Trayvon Martin's body? I think at this point you should end with the family because that's what the jury will remember at the end of your case. Uh, I also think now in retrospect listening to the testimony of Sabrina and the brother that they should have been brought up immediately and the state could have used that information in their opening. And I don't know why they didn't frame Trayvon as coming from this family when they opened and, and set the tone for what this case was about and who the victim was. Yeah. So, you know, we'll see what the defense is going to do, but 
I think that the prosecution is going to go out on this witness. It's just a little awkward that they are dividing her testimony between calling her initially and then recalling her now. Again, that's a live look at Sabrina Fulton on the stand when she begins to give testimony once again. We'll definitely break in. You're not going to miss a moment here on HLN. We have again with us Esther Panish, criminal defense attorney, Jason Johnson. He's a professor, also spent time in Sanford. Are they back in, guys? Are they still in? Okay, they're, they're back in. We don't want to miss a moment, so let's get back in the court. Okay, we're still waiting for the microphones uh, to be turned on. And, and, I, and I'm sure Esther and Jason will both agree and both have said it. We're, we're not, we haven't heard the last of the 911 call. The defense, when they begin their case, and at some point they'll play the 911 call, and one of the family members of George Zimmerman likely to testify and say, that's George Zimmerman's voice. But again, for background, uh, and Esther, correct me if I go astray, we had the FBI audio expert here at Takanakasone basically say they couldn't decipher who it was. But he was able, or at least the prosecution was able through him to say voice familiarity, someone who knows the person screaming, they can testify. And, and then following that, the defense said, well, there could be listener bias. So we've seen basically those arguments play out today, right? That's right. That's exactly right. This is exactly what the expert was t talking about. The mom wants to know that it's her son. It's important that it's her son. We wouldn't be in this courtroom if it wasn't her son's voice on screaming help me help me uh, at the same time you're going to have George Zimmerman's parents saying uh, prob probably the same thing that's my son I know my son's voice of course each side has a reason that they need to believe that it's their son and I firmly believe that they believe it's their son on each side telling the truth. I believe they're telling the truth. I believe they want to believe that. But that is what the listener bias is that the expert warned us about. Got it. Okay. Again, we, uh, as we see Sabrina Fulton on the stand, there was a tweet from Sabrina Fulton. Uh, uh, guys, do we have that? And we can read it for our viewers. Day 19, I pray that God gives me strength to properly represent my angel Trayvon. And again, regardless, and it goes on to say, he may not be perfect, but he's mine. I plead the blood of Jesus for healing. Again, that from Sabrina Fulton, and she is going to, again, testify. She's been recalled to the stand. We want to hit a break, guys? Okay, we're going to take a quick break. If she begins to testify,